boom, your first hookah from us has arrived on your doorstep. You're super excited. You're about to call your friends over and get this session going. But first, we're gonna make sure that you have everything that you need to have the perfect hookah session. Before we get too far, we're gonna make sure that we have all the items that we ordered inside this box and there's no missing or damaged items. If you do have any broken or missing items, be sure to contact us immediately and we can resolve this issue as quickly as possible. Before you get any hookah session started, especially your first one out of the box, you're gonna to wanna to make sure that all of your parts are thoroughly clean. That means your base, your hookah, and your bowl. Sometimes your hose, if your hose is washable, Hookah hoses are available in two different forms, non-washable and washable. Just be sure to check the product page of the, what you're purchasing to see if it's a washable or non-washable hose. Or feel free to contact us and we'll let you know. When you're filling your base with water, it's recommended that you stop at about an inch to an inch and a half above your downstem. If you don't have enough water, it'll be a very airy smoke and it'll be a little harsh. If you fill this up with too much water, it'll be very, very tight and it'll be hard to get smoke. This right here is your base grommet. It's what helps create a tight seal between the glass base and your hookah shaft. But it goes on the shaft first, not on the glass base first. When you're inserting your hookah shaft into your base, you're just gonna make sure that your base grommet is leveled all the way around, otherwise you might have an uneven hookah. But once you're done with that, just apply some pressure and this will slide right into place. And you can give a quick test pull just to make sure that you're all good, but you never wanna carry a hookah by the shaft. You always wanna make sure that you're holding it from the base. All right, this is your hose port. This is gonna be a very important area in your hookah session because this is where your smoke is gonna travel through. So you're gonna make sure that this area is always clean and unclogged. And you're also gonna make sure that you always use a hose grommet so you can actually have a very tight seal with no air leaks when you go to insert your hose for the first time. All right, so as we climb up this ladder of assembly, one of the last pieces that we're gonna put on before the hookah bowl itself is going to actually be the coal tray. This is gonna be what holds your lit charcoal and sometimes unlit charcoal. It's also gonna be where you kind of dump off some of your ash during your session from your charcoal. So it's a very useful piece. Make sure you keep it clean and there you go. All right, so the last grommet that we're gonna be using on our hookah setup is going to be a bowl grommet. These things are available in a lot of different sizes because there's a lot of different bowl types on the market and it can be used right on top of your bowl port just by sliding it over or you can insert it inside of your bowl before you insert it on top of your hookah, just like that. And you're always gonna make sure that you give it a nice quick tug test. Make sure you're all good to go before applying any heat on top. Boom! All right, we've reached the top of the hookah and that is the bowl. All right, so the bowl that we're gonna be using today is an Egyptian style bowl. These are available in a lot of different sizes, colors, glazes, but as long as you have this interior kind of set up like this, it is an Egyptian bowl. Um, it's probably one of the most commonly owned bowls, so we're just gonna show you how to use it. It's very easy to use, so we're gonna get into it with some alfakar shisha, which is what we have right here. I'm gonna be using blueberry mint. So really to get this session going with a lot of different tobaccos that you'll be using is uh, just breaking up the shisha. As you can tell, it does come pretty uh, tightly packed out of the package. So what you're gonna be doing, your main job is, is breaking that up with your fingers and just letting it fall into the bowl. So you can see just right there, it allows a lot of air to pass uh, through around the bowl and kind of get the heat evenly passed through your shisha. All right, so breaking it up once again with your fingers and letting it fall into place. You're really gonna be filling this bowl about 75 to 85% full and you can try that session out. If you feel like that is not enough uh, smoke for you, not enough flavor, you can add some more. And if you feel like that's too much, then of course you can bring that down just a little bit. But this is gonna be one of the main variables on how your session is performing, is what's going on up, up in this area right here. All right, so there you go. This is very loosely packed. You basically just, like I said, break it up with your fingers, let it fall into place. Um, you can use a fork, uh, but usually on that first time around, I just recommend just using your fingers just so you can really get used to uh, filling up this bowl. Just make sure that you did not plug any of these holes that were underneath with any of the shisha. And you can give a quick test just by blowing just a little bit of air uh, on the underside of this bowl. But once we're done here, we're going to apply some tin foil and then we're going to move on to the charcoal. 
All right, so one of the final pieces to your bowl setup is going to be your tin foil. Now, tin foil has a couple different styles. You can find it in a pre-punched and also pre-cut form, or you have your standard right off the roll uh, aluminum foil. Now, this is available in heavy duty, there's also thin versions, there's also paper thin versions. So really um, the thickness of the foil will play a part in how many pieces that you use. But with a tearaway foil, you're normally using two pieces. And with these pre-punch ones, if it's very thick like this one, um, you'll be using just one piece. So the really important part of your tin foil is that you do not have any sort of sagging and that you have a very drum tight foil setup. So in order to do that, you can place your tin foil right on top. You're gonna fold with just kind of the grip of your hand to see the size of your bowl, just like that. So now you know that this is your ring. So before you tighten this all the way, just give it a slight tug and you can see your foil start to straighten out. All right, so using just the sides of the bowl, you can kind of pull down just a little bit to create a very drum tight, flat surface up here. This is gonna help you have a very evenly cooked session. If you ever have any saggingness or kind of crinkled foil up here, um, it can cause your bowl to not heat properly, but it can also cause your shisha to burn funny. And in funnel bowl setups, it can block that spire and cause some foil drag and not enough airflow coming through. All right, so we're about to punch our holes in our tin foil. So you have two options of tools to use. So you can use a foil poker. These things have a handle and a sharpened metal tip, which actually cuts through the tin foil very, very quickly, kind of just just like that. But you also have a toothpick as an option. Um, toothpicks are great for people that like a little bit larger holes. You don't have to use as many holes because these holes are a little bit larger. But what you're also gonna wanna pay attention to is the sharpness of the toothpick. If you're using a dull toothpick, you'll actually have trouble getting through the tin foil and it can cause the tin foil to sink in a little bit and uh, cause a harsh bowl. So whenever you're using it, just make sure you have a nice sharp tip and you'll be able to punch through just very quickly just like that. So what we're gonna be doing is punching through about eh, around 25, 35 uh, holes. Could be more, it could be less. It's really gonna depend on your style. Um, the more holes that you have allow some heat to escape, um, but it's also gonna give you some airflow. If you don't have enough holes in your bowl, um, your heat will be trapped inside of this. It'll also create um, kind of a more restricted inhale and a very hot inhale. So there's um, a couple different uh, tweaks that you can make to this in order to get the session that you want. Um, it just really just kind of plays into how you do this top part. Um, you can poke in several different styles. You can do a full ring around, you can do it left to right, up to down, zigzag, or just do random. All right, now that I've got my holes punched in my bowl, I'm gonna get my grommet on and look at that. You have a ready-made hookah head you are good to go, look at you go. Let's get smoking. Boom! Are you ready to get some heat going on your bowl? All right, so you're gonna need charcoal for that, right? And we have two different types of charcoal pretty much on the market, and that is quick lights and natural charcoal. All right, so your quick lights, probably gonna be what you've heard about the most. Your friends have these, your hookah lounge have these, and sometimes they arrive with your hookah right out of the package. So with this, the only thing that you need to get this coal completely lit is a single flame. That means a lighter or a torch. Now the natural charcoal route, it takes a little bit longer. It's gonna be around 10 minutes or plus uh, to actually get this coal completely lit on all four sides. But with this, you will not be using a uh, lighter or a single flame or a torch or a flamethrower or anything like that. You will only, only, only be using a charcoal burner, just like that. This charcoal, uh, it does, once again, take a little bit longer, but the results are rewarding. Um, it's a little bit higher heat. It definitely improves the flavor in comparison to a quick light charcoal. And you can definitely get some very, very tasty clouds from this. All right, no matter where you light your charcoal, just make sure that you're in a well-ventilated area. The smoke and smell that kind of comes off of these coals during the lighting process, you don't want around or in your hookah session or even really trapped inside your, your room, your smoking room. So just make sure that you've got a fan or just a well-ventilated area. Of course, you don't want to have any sort of clothing or flammable materials around your burner area, but just make sure that you give it some space and that you also keep your charcoal in a dry area as well to create a longer lasting charcoal. 
All right, so while we have our natural coals burning on here, since it's gonna take a little bit, I'm just gonna show you really quick how to actually get your quick light charcoal started. So with your charcoal inside your tongs, you're gonna take a lighter, and once you see that spark start to happen, it is good to go. So depending on the size of your bowl, it will require a certain amount of charcoal pieces. So with a smaller piece just like this right here, you're probably gonna be using two small pieces. And then depending on the amount of heat that you want from your bowl, you can be using three cubes or two flats. It really just depends on your setup. You can use a fanning motion to really get some airflow going to your quick light charcoal to make sure that you get it glowing and fully cooked all the way around before you apply it on top of your bowl. So when you actually go to apply it on top of it, you just place your charcoal right on the edge and you can move this piece around to fully cook your bowl or you can start off a little bit closer to the middle with a second piece. If you want just a little bit more heat, you can add two pieces of quick light charcoal on top of your bowl. All right, so natural charcoal um, will basically be lit and until the underside is completely cooked, at which point you're gonna wanna flip it. And usually this is at the halfway mark of your 10 minute to 12 minute counter. So once you have your charcoal in your tongs, you're gonna flip it and let it rest in that same spot. And just do that for all three until your charcoal is completely and thoroughly cooked. All right, so once your natural charcoals are cooked, they are glowing, there are no black spots on them, that is when you're gonna to wanna to take them and place them on top of your uh, bowl. So when you do that, just make sure that you keep your charcoal kind of right on the edge to begin with and allow you to really build up the heat and choose your heat level. If you want a little bit more heat, of course you can scoot them in, but if you want anything less than that, you can take some off, you can leave some on, and uh, really just really just choose your own heat. All right, so your hookah is set up and ready to go. Real quick, before you take your first pull, just make sure that everything is the way that it's supposed to be. Your grommet is in securely, your hose is in perfect, your charcoal is on top, your bowl is snug, and everything is the way that it's supposed to be. Once you're all done with that check, go ahead and take your first pull. And we've got blueberry. So take your first, your second pull, really get the feel of it. If you feel like it's a little too hot for you, go ahead and take one of your charcoal pieces off and you can put it inside your coal tray and kind of move the charcoal around and really just cool off the bowl or heat up the bowl. Now if you're using quick lights or natural charcoal, either way there will be some ash that builds up and once again that is what this coal tray is for. You can just dump off some of your ash, just let your charcoal just drop inside the tray and then you can place your charcoal right back on top of your bowl, just like that. So while you're smoking your hookah, if you ever feel like it's getting a little too harsh or it's getting too hot, make sure to use the purge function to purge out any old or stale smoke or hot smoke and also use this to cool off your bowl. You can do that really quickly just by purging, just like this. And doing that will clear out the base, but it'll also push some cool air through your bowl and cool off that session for you. All right, you've done it. You have made your hookah. Call your friends over. It's time to smoke, it's time to party. Hopefully we've answered all the questions that you might have as far as getting your first hookah put together. If we didn't address that question, please put it in the comments below. And if you need any type of real time assistance, make sure to log on to our website. We've got live chat, you can email, you can call us, you can check out our blog or any more of our YouTube channel videos for any more tips and tricks. All right, so thanks for watching Hookah Dash Shisha and we'll catch you in the next video. Happy smoking.